Hello. Today we're going to talk about how the best companies build with Webflow. But first, let us introduce ourselves. My name is R.R. Abrat, and I am one of the founding technical architects over at Webflow Enterprise. And I've been privileged to be able to help almost 100 enterprise companies and train them as they build successfully and help them launch their web projects successfully with Webflow. And my name is Matt Varghese. I'm the CEO over at 8020, which is a Webflow Enterprise Studio headquartered in Victoria, British Columbia. And over the last few years, I've had the privilege of working with clients of all sizes, from bootstrap startups all the way up to publicly traded enterprise companies and everything in between. And over the last year, R and I have actually been working really closely together because he's been the TA on a lot of our development projects at, at 8020. And between us, we've seen a lot of the ways that projects can go really right and launch successfully or go horribly awry. And today we want you to learn from the things that we've learned over the last year together and what we've seen with enterprise clients and what makes those projects successful. So let's do a quick overview of what we're going to cover today. Because of all these companies that we've seen building in Webflow and all these projects that we've been a part of, we've seen the same problems that keep recurring over and over in Webflow. And then these problems then bring about what, do, what these companies actually need from their website. And then we want to highlight how these companies are achieving success and how they're fixing these problems with Webflow. So what problem keeps recurring? In my day-to-day -day role at 8020, I get to sit in on a lot of sales calls, and more often than not, I hear the same problem over and over again, especially from enterprise clients. It's, we need a new website, and we need to be able to own it. Because right now, in order to make any change, even the smallest piece of uh, text changing on the home page, I have to fill out a ticket. I have to find an engineer and rope them in. I need to gather all these resources, and it's really inefficient, and it feels like I'm pulling teeth. And so at the end of the day, a lot of them want to move to a platform like Webflow because they're just tired of relying on engineers in order to make these changes to the site. And I get it. At the end of the day, engineers don't want to work on the marketing site. That's not what they signed up for. They probably got roped into it or asked to do it as a favor. And they don't ultimately want to work on the site at all. And at the same time, marketing needs to rely on engineers to make changes to the website, to create new pages, to add blog posts, everything like that. And so there's this fundamental disconnect that leads to the website being a hindrance to the company. It, it, it becomes a bottleneck and holds back the company in order to, you know, if they want to create new campaigns or new pages or anything like that, it just becomes very slow, disorganized, and chaotic and creates just a constraint for the whole organization. When in reality, the website should be enabling the team. You know, at the end of the day, the dream scenario, which we've been able to see a lot of Webflow Enterprise clients and, and self-serve clients as well achieve, is they want to be able to ship pages really fast. They want to be able to spin up landing pages or, you know, new campaigns or test something or, or you know, update, you know, content across the site. And they want to be able to do that efficiently and quickly and without having to rely on all these resources lining up at the right time. They want to be able to do it themselves and do it quickly. And at the end of the day, that's totally possible with Webflow. But what ends up happening is that more often than not, if companies don't come into this with best practices in mind, that original problem still persists. Clients end up building inefficiently in Webflow, trying to do it themselves, and what ends up happening is that the website still hinders the team, it still slows them down, and even on Webflow, as great of a tool as it is, it becomes a bottleneck for the organization. So seeing these problems then helps us identify what do companies need from their website? You know, Matt, I remember when I first started using Webflow, when I discovered Webflow, I was so excited to use it. I was so excited to jump into the tool. I built my portfolio in one night. Can you believe that? But if I were to show you the back end of it, now I will be so ashamed of myself because it was not built with best practices in mind. Why is that? Because my mindset was, this is my portfolio. I'm going to edit this in the future. No one's ever going to see the back end. No one's ever going to touch the back end. I'm the one that's going to update this. And what happens is companies are building with the same mindset in Webflow. 
what usually happens is a web designer all of a sudden comes across Webflow, they fall in love with it because it is an amazing tool, and so they want to bring it over to their company. They may have built a portfolio, they may have built a side project, and then all of a sudden they realize this is the best solution for our company. And then they go ahead and bring it to their company, to their management or director, and then they start building in Webflow. What happens is they build sloppily. They don't really build with a team mindset in mind. They build with the mindset of a solo creator. And that's how most companies are approaching building their website. They don't really care about what's going to happen on the back end. They don't really, they're not really looking for the future. They're not building it for the team. And what happens is that web creator becomes the website person. They become the hero. Everything website related goes through that person. What that creates, we've seen it, is a bottleneck. Because now all of a sudden, everything is limited by that one person. But see, companies can avoid having these bottlenecks by making sure that they're building the website with a team mindset instead. And so companies should be building the website to enable, like what Matt said, the team. And so we've, we realized that there are about three things that a company needs from their website. The first one is agility. Companies want to be able to put out landing pages. They want to be able to launch new marketing campaigns. They want to be able to announce new product pages right off the fly without having to wait for engineering, without having to wait for their website person to maybe come back from illness or something like that. They want to be able to launch new content quickly without having to wait around. They also want to achieve maximum efficiency. Companies don't want to waste time. They want to achieve maximum productivity with minimum wasted effort. And we're going to talk a little bit more later on about how companies are wasting time by having to fix errors, troubleshoot issues, because from the very beginning, the website was not built with the right mindset in mind. And lastly, and I think what is the most important, is scalability. The website needs to be set up and structured in a way that easily allows people to work across teams, allows teams to cross collaborate and scales as the company grows. And by the way, we've seen Webflow Enterprise launch tools for enterprise companies such as Site Activity Log, such as Roles and Permissions, and even just recently expanding our CMS items because the needs of growing enterprise companies grow more and more over the next decade or over the next year. And so the teams need to grow along with it and the website needs to grow along with it too. So how are companies actually achieving this using Webflow? And how can you in your role as either part of an enterprise team or a developer working on an enterprise project walk away with agility, efficiency, and scalability in mind in your project? RR and I have nailed down two key areas to focus on here documentation and design systems. And a lot of times, it's the intersection of those two things. To start, I think there's documentation inside of Webflow that's really worth highlighting, especially on these CMS-heavy uh, websites where end users are often you know, jumping into the Webflow editor or into the CMS directly from the designer and adding content, you know, whether it's uploading a case study or a new blog post. You, know, you want to have the information in there and allow users to essentially fill out all those fields and, and give them the information they need to be successful and do those things quickly. And one of the things Webflow allows us to do is it allows us to add help text into these fields. So I can inform the end user really easily right out of the gate, what information do I need? And what are the exact specifications do I, uh, that I need that information in? And more information about that field specifically. So we can see here in this screenshot, this is actually a screenshot from one of our client projects. You know, we added a lot of information about you know, what is the actual exact image resolution that we need uploaded to these fields? And you know, further down this page, you know, how are these fields used? You know, this field is actually used for the, the hero section heading, or this field is used for conditional visibility, things of that nature. And so having that information inside of Webflow, it removes this you know, uh, uh, information silo that often comes up where I have to go reach out to someone and say, hey, actually, what was that? that like, what was the exa exact format that I needed to format this in? Um, all of that information is right there inside of Webflow, and it just removes information silos altogether and streamlines communication. But on top of that, we have documentation outside of Webflow. And I think this is actually one of the most cr critical components of a successful Webflow build, whether it's self-serve or enterprise. I think just across the spectrum, this applies. And we've seen a lot of agencies uh, you know, do this really well. You know, they use tools like Notion or Coda or ClickUp to help create really robust documentation that talks about 
everything related to the website and answers a lot of frequently asked questions. Like, how do I use different headings across the site? When is it you know, most applicable? How does accessibility work on the site? And you know, how do I add alt text? You know, how do I create new pages using symbols and components? Having that information all in a place like Notion or Coda can help really streamline communication and get team members on the same page really quickly to help build and launch the site. You know, over at 8020, one of the things that we love doing is creating really robust Loom libraries. And so, you know, Webflow is a visual development platform. We like showing that information visually as well. And so, you know, the developer that works on a project, we oftentimes have them create really detailed videos on, you know, how do I create a new page? How do I upload a blog post? You know, how do I use these different features of Webflow to help, you know, build new pages or ship things quickly? And so, regardless of what you use, I think having documentation in place is just really critical for success because it just, at the end of the day, communication is all that matters as, it, you know, for a, uh, a Webflow build and a website build in general. And so, having all of that in one place is going to be really key to your success. So how does having proper documentation help us achieve you know, these three key focuses of agility, efficiency, and scalability? To me, I think, especially from the perspective of remote work you know, on, on the topic of agility, getting everyone on the same page and getting them aligned is going to be really critical. And so I don't want to have to be an end user trying to create a new page and wondering if I'm going to break something and have to call the one person that knows how to modify the website. I, I want to be able to get that information really quickly. And with great documentation, you can do that. They have everything they need right in front of them, and it's all asynchronous. On the topic of efficiency, to me, with clear documentation, we get rid of redundant communication altogether. We have all that information, again, in one place, and I don't have to go having unnecessary conversations or repeated conversations over and over. And then lastly, on the topic of scalability, I think this is actually one of the most important reasons as to why you should have proper documentation. In enterprise companies uh, specifically, you know, a lot of times you're raising funding, you're going public, you're growing teams really rapidly, and especially in a world of cross-collaboration. There's a lot of people touching the website. And I, as you know, maybe the manager of the website, I don't want to have to worry about training all these people one-on-one. One -on -one. That's going to get really exhausting very quickly, and it's going to be a bottleneck for your organization. But if you have great proper documentation, there's a, this is a one-to-many relationship. So I can create one clean, detailed piece of documentation and distribute that to everyone that needs the information, and I'm done. That scales infinitely. Along with documentation, the other differentiator between a self-serve or a solo mindset created website and an enterprise level website is having a super powerful design system. Design systems are so crucial for websites that are built for the enterprise. Just as product teams or brand design teams have design systems built in software like Figma or Sketch or Adobe Figma, you can also build these design systems in Webflow. It's actually really crucial for your website to have these design systems. Now, from what we've seen with design systems in Webflow, it's usually comprised of three main things. The first one is having a proper style guide. So what is a style guide? Many of you know what that may be. It's a resource hub. It's a home for all of your most important website styles, all of your most important website elements, like your buttons, your colors, your typography, your rich text, your icons, whatever elements that you're gonna be using repeatedly all across your website, you wanna have one center or main repository for those elements. This is really, really crucial. Because number one, this ensures, first of all, that you have consistent branding all across your website. And by the way, this affects all throughout your website. This affects your branding, this affects your design, and this also even affects, bleeds into SEO and even accessibility when it comes to H1s, H2s, your typography hierarchy. It's really, really crucial. And then enterprise companies are then able to get these elements and styles. And instead of having to recreate them every single time, having to remember what was that button class named again, they can then take these elements, they can copy it <laughs> real quick. We know this copy and paste is probably one of the best features that Webflow has. Why is that? It's very beneficial for brand consistency. It's very, uh, it's very beneficial for efficiency. And let's be honest, we're all really, really lazy. We don't wanna have to create every single thing. We just wanna copy it and paste it. So you can copy elements, put it all across your site. You can interact with elements, or, or sorry, inspect elements 
or you could even edit these elements one time and have them affect all throughout your site. Having that proper style guide is really, really crucial. The second part of a design system is having proper symbols and components and utilizing them with a marketing standpoint. So we know that symbols and components can be used for nav bars and footers, and we've also seen reusable components now, component libraries being built out, and that is awesome, that is amazing. You wanna have these components for your website as well. What this does is it enables marketing teams, is it enables content teams to be able to put out landing pages, to be able to launch marketing campaigns, to be able to uh, announce new products and create new pages for products. And instead of having to wait around, they can launch it in literally mere minutes if they use these symbols and components correctly. It's great for even testing. Whenever you wanna test out a landing page, you want a, a key stakeholder to look at this landing page and inspect it, instead of having to go through testing, you can just spin it up real quick and give it to someone and they can go ahead and inspect it. What companies are doing is they're taking these symbols and components and they're creating uh, websites or pages almost like Lego blocks and taking sections and able to literally go out to market so much faster. And you know what I've actually seen too? I've seen great companies um, do full website rebuilds in record time because what they're doing is they'll create the home page and they'll actually go ahead and animate the home page, make it fully responsive, and just go ahead and create components or symbols from each and every one of those areas. And then those can be used for all your other pages, like your product pages, your about pages, all of these other pages for a full website rebuild. They're able to launch in record time because of symbols and components. And then lastly, which I think is really underrated and super important, is having a class framework. Now, for those of you that have been working with Webflow for a while now, we all know Webflow is a great web design tool, and that's what it is. But at the very core of it, at the very heart of it, Webflow is a visual development tool. The back end of Webflow, as you're designing in Webflow, it's, uh, it creates semant clean semantic code, HTML and CSS, and puts that out to the browser. So because of that understanding, we're then able to take methods from classic or traditional front-end development and apply that in Webflow for maximum efficiency. Now, I know this takes a little bit of a learning curve and this takes a little bit of a technical learning, but if you learn this and really apply it, it can skyrocket your building in Webflow because classes are super important in Webflow. Ben Parker, not to be confused with our good friend, but the uncle of Peter Parker once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Now classes, you have such great power to build whatever you envision, but because you have so much power and flexibility that, you also have the great potential and tendency to create a really massive mess in Webflow. And we've seen enterprise companies mm -hmm. with great intentions have some really messy builds because of not having a proper class naming structure or a class framework. And we see some examples that you see here in the screen. I recommend you look out there. There's actually even now in the community, people launching class frameworks or class naming structures. There's great ones out there. And whatever you choose, the point is this, you wanna have some sort of class naming structure so that your team is then enabled to really own the management and really own the website experience. It really all boils down to having organization. That's what a design system does. So how does having a powerful design system help achieve our three key focuses? Well, first off, it helps agility. We've already talked about how symbols and components can help create landing pages, launch marketing campaigns in mere minutes. But even on a macro level, I've seen amazing companies have full website rebuilds or full website migrations in record time because of having a proper class naming structure and really just having a mindset of being organized and enabling the team. And then they're able to put things out to market so much faster. Secondly, we wanna, th this helps achieve efficiency. Instead of wasting time correcting errors, troubleshooting issues, trying to figure out what in the world is going on with this website that I just took over, they are then able to not waste time in those menial efforts of just merely making sure the website still works, but then they're able to move the needle forward and really help the business move forward because of their website. And lastly, Matt, you know this, is scalability. 
This helps achieve scalability. I've seen a company, I know of a company that we, we started working with them uh, six or seven months ago. The team that we're working with now in that same company is a totally different team. Mm -hmm. None of those people that were working on the website six months ago are, even, they are, are not even working on the website anymore. And it's a totally different team. But, but because they built it with the right framework from the very beginning, they were able to continue moving along with the website. You know, your company is going to grow. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope it grows. <laughs> and as your company grows, your marketing team grows, your content team grows, and so the needs grow. But we also want to make sure that from the very beginning, we have a mindset of building a site and a structure that allows for flawless scalability so that your website grows along with your company. So what did we learn today? We learned that the best companies that build in Webflow focus on agility, efficiency, and scalability. And how do they get there? To us, they get there through two main avenues, proper, clear documentation and a really powerful design system. And if you have these things, you will achieve agility, efficiency, and scalability and have a great Webflow site that scales with you and your company over time. Thanks for listening. I'm Matt Varghese. And I'm R.R. Abrat. We hope you enjoyed.